Hi, it's Dwyer. Money, 1776.com, a free site. Also, always, 1776.com, a free site. Nothing I say in this video should be construed as investment advice. I want everyone to do their own due diligence, their own independent research. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Today is September the 9th, 2024. In a few hours, Apple is going to make some big announcements. Right now, what I want people to realize is that I consider Apple to be a great company with great products. But let's talk artificial intelligence. Right now, this is hours before Apple's big announcement, which is supposed to include the rollout of a new product line. Right? Just understand right now, at this moment, if you were to go to an Opera browser here online, and understand Opera is a publicly traded company. Right, the symbol is O-P-R-A, right? Opera works with Apple, as Apple users know, right? You're going to find out that embedded in Opera's browser is an artificial intelligence assistant. Understand, this AI assistant allows you to create pictures. It allows you to use artificial intelligence to you know answer your questions write things for you more importantly understand the opera browser right now again the symbol is opra it's free folks this is where technology is if you go to the bing browser Again, the Bing browser is free. The Bing browser is made by Microsoft, a major investor in open AI. You're going to find out that that Bing browser has its own AI assistant. They call it Copilot. Copilot makes great photos, folks. You can create a lot of pictures in Copilot. Copilot can do a lot of things for you. You can do research and they'll actually give you a bibliography where you can then go from their AI results. And this is right now to the stories that they're basing the results on. Right? Bing will read their results to you if that's what you want. It's extremely advanced. Again, it's from Microsoft, one of the investors in OpenAI. And here again, just understand that Bing browser, the Copilot feature, it's free. You may have noticed that if you do searches in Google, right, using the Chrome browser, they will actually, at the top of the search results now, give you what they call an AI overview. And of course, there too, you can then click on the sources Google's artificial intelligence is using to come up with that AI overview. Google, of course, has an artificial intelligence assistant. They call theirs Gemini. Right? And of course, Gemini makes great pictures. Right? You can, you know, ask Gemini to create a picture of A, B, and C, and they'll combine it in a photo. Right? You need to think of AI like hip hop people think of old DJs, Marley Marl, right? Who would take the beat from one song, paste it to some melody in another song. Um, increase the tempo a little bit so it sounded original even though it was derived from these other sources and then release it right sometimes 
the producer would get an MC to flow over it, it would sound completely original. What AI is doing is they're going back through all the stuff that's been written that's in a large language model database. They're going back at all these photos that have appeared on the net. They're tweaking the photos. They're coming up with drawings off the photos. Uh, let's say a thousand people took photos of the beach in Brazil. They'll, you know, you then say, hey, I want a cartoon depiction of the beach in Brazil. And the system will pull all these photos. Then we'll convert it into a cartoon. And then we'll provide you with the cartoon depiction all within a matter of seconds. Now, this is important because like Opera Browser, Microsoft's Bing Browser is free. Copilot is free. Google's Gemini is free. Of course, Google Chrome, the browser, is free. All of this is free before Apple makes its big announcement. So let's ask a question. Because no doubt, during the announcement, Apple is going to talk about the capabilities of artificial intelligence. Right? They're going to have it on their phones. So you'll have mobility, just like you do right now with the Bing browser on Microsoft. Right, just like you do right now using Gemini on Google. Right, understand these tech companies which have higher multiples than the rest of the market don't want to rain on each other's parades. Right, these big announcements, the others want to take a step back. They don't want to say, hey, we can match that. Hey, you have that capability right now on your laptop or on your phone if you visit our sites. They don't want to do that. They want to support everyone else in the community. Because, of course, as JFK said, a rising tide lifts all boats. If you fall in love with Apple's AI capability, then you're on a friend's Android system, and you realize that that Android system also has AI capability, well, it's more bear for everyone, right? You've jumped into the AI part of the water and you now realize that there are many players in that AI part of the water. And you now realize that that AI part of the water, parts of it are free. And the technology is evolving so quickly that the parts you have to pay for will eventually become free in a matter of months. So how big is Apple's moat really in AI? Aren't many others using AI technology? Isn't AI already a big part of the Android ecosystem? Right? Doesn't Google search already provide you with AI overviews? Aren't Companies like Google, Microsoft, Amazon, big investor in Anthropic, look up that company, another large language model AI company. Don't these companies all have data centers? Aren't they in the business of getting AI results to you in a matter of seconds? Right. So what I want people to realize is that the technology is breathtaking. Maybe not the ownership of the technology. The technology is already out there. Customers of these other tech giants are already using the technology free of cost. Right. So. The price of phones has jumped. The price of Apple phones have jumped. Right? What I want folks to do is to take a step back right now and look at the economy. 
Now let me just say, big, big lots, and I want you to think about the big lots consumer, often working class, often looking for deals. Folks, that consumer is under pressure. Big Lots right now is contemplating filing for bankruptcy. You may have heard Macy's, right? Perhaps with the more affluent consumer. is about to close 56 stores. You may have heard that Dollar Tree is closing hundreds, if not thousands, of stores. All you have to do is look at the chart for Dollar General, a different store. And you'll notice the stock price is down big. Of course, this is after 99 cents only stores filed for bankruptcy. Right? What I want folks to also consider, and again, I praise Apple. I think they have many, many, many very high quality products. But we're here thinking about things like opportunity costs. In other words, if I'm running short on money to shop at Big Lots or to shop at Dollar General or Dollar Tree or Macy's, right, am I in a position where I can spend hundreds of dollars on an Apple phone that has some AI features that might already be out in the market in certain forums for free. Or, which might have a premium price tag today, but might be where general technology is in a matter of months. So in terms of opportunity costs, let's talk about one of the best investors in history, certainly of our time. Understand, guys like this will hoard cash when the things around them are about to go on sale. Warren Buffett recently sold about half of his Apple stake. He sold about $80 billion worth. Let me repeat that. $80 billion worth of Apple. Now, understand, Warren Buffett is in a different position than you and me. Right? When you're a big-time shareholder, when you own billions of dollars of a company, when you pick up the phone you actually have a speed dial that might include the names of some bigwigs at the company. If you have concerns, those concerns become their concerns. You can pick up the phone and say, hey, what's going on here? Warren Buffett is not relying on, let's say, the good papers I read, the retail news sources I use, no, he is dealing in the world of insiders. He's dealing in the world of personal relationships. Influence with the board if he doesn't have board seats. Right? This is the guy with better information than most. He has the kind of information that a guy who's able to sell $80 billion worth of your stock has. Right? Not many can match him. Now just realize that based on the information that Warren Buffett has, and no doubt, that information might even include some of the stuff that Apple's going to announce to the public today. Warren Buffett has made a decision that he wants to cash out of part of his Apple holdings, which he did so he can have a cash reserve that he can use on other investment opportunities. Now, let me say this. We're in a world right now where there is market turmoil. 
right? Many people, many, believe we're headed for a recession. The yield curve is uninverted, which almost always augurs a recession. So, because prices are changing and people are panicking, you have some situations right now in the market that I believe are compelling. Folks, I want you to look at the price of a barrel of oil. Folks, oil is down big. Now, it's a bit shocking because this is at a time where nuclear power in the United States um, isn't being developed to meet demand. We have huge demand for artificial intelligence. Something has to power these data centers. We're clearly going to have an energy shortage. Crypto requires mining. Now you have spot Bitcoin, spot Ethereum ETFs. Right? Just understand, as Bitcoin now enters society through the front door as opposed to the back door where it was, as companies like BlackRock are now, you know, participating, Fidelity, in the spot Bitcoin ETF markets. You can imagine cryptocurrency mining having huge energy demands. Right? Electric vehicles have a lot of energy demands. Right? Understand. Fossil fuels lead up to electricity. So it's amazing that in a world where we're having much greater energy demands and where the United States, quite frankly, is ill-prepared, even with fracking, even with us now being an oil exporter, it's stunning that with the United States really having not invested in nuclear, fuel, uh, nuclear energy, it's a bit stunning that a barrel of oil is down. Let me say this. I own some gold, right? Gold, of course, recently was at an all-time high. It's retreated a little bit, but not as much as gold miners have retreated. Have people figured out that if gold is bullish, gold miners should be bullish? Aren't gold miners mispriced right here? Right, folks, understand, gold miners are down to the point where in the very short term, they look delinked from the price of gold, as if that's possible. Let's talk about another area that's been down big. I remember when Bitcoin, and I remember it vividly, because I hold some Bitcoin. I remember when Bitcoin was up around high 60s, low 70s, 1,000 per Bitcoin. Folks, now it's struggling to stay at $55,000, $56,000. This is in a halving year. What I want people to do is to go back and look at the halving cycle. Don't believe some hack here on YouTube. You look at the halving cycle. You look at the number of months after halving that Bitcoin jumps in price, right? If you do the math, Bitcoin should really accelerate in October, November, and December of this year. Right? And yet, Bitcoin is struggling. Right? Understand, too, in crypto, and I know Max Kaiser and people like this, the Bitcoin maximalist crowd, don't believe this. But some altcoins might even be better situated than Bitcoin. Smart contract capability has opened the door to decentralized finance, right? Just understand, Bitcoin's down big, Ethereum is down big, and Ethereum really is one of the backbones of the decentralized finance ecosystem. So you can imagine what Warren Buffett saw when he decided to sell 
his Apple stock. He's seen some essential goods and services, right? Oil, gold miners. I know Buffett has said critical things about cryptocurrency in the past, but Bitcoin, folks, they're all reasonably priced right now. What happens during times like this is that people don't quite know what the future holds. And there's a lot of panic selling. There's a lack of conviction in things like gold miners. Right? You know, understand too, you don't even have to pick the right gold miner. You could pick the GDX ETF or the GDXJ. Right? Or as I've suggested in an earlier video, look up the last one of these high risks and ETF uh, that gives you the capability to outperform the GDX. Well, let me just say, things are mispriced. That'll be apparent in a few months. Right? You have to ask yourself the tough question. Do I want to tie up my money in a tech company that's dealing in the world of technology, right? Artificial intelligence, a technology that's already out in the public for free, right? Understand the head honcho of OpenAI was asked um, how OpenAI was going to make money. And he famously said, you know what? We're hoping that a day will come where the technology tells us how we'll be able to monetize it. Right, folks? Artificial intelligence is already out there. Right? Just be aware that, you know, you don't have to spend $1,000 on a phone to have access to artificial intelligence that gives you the capability to organize your email inbox or to create cartoon pictures or real looking pictures. As many of you know, I'm a YouTuber and YouTube now has included a question when you're uploading a video of does your video have realistic looking computer generated images that might confuse some of the viewers. Right, folks? Google realizes that now people can upload realistic looking scenes that were created by artificial intelligence. Right, folks? That's where the technology is now. It's out in the public. No individual company has such a moat, has such a head start where they can charge a heavy premium or should be able to charge a heavy premium at a time when many things, many core commodities are mispriced. <laughs> so let me just say, the average price earnings ratio, and that's the real price of a stock, isn't it? Right? It's not the dollar price. You want to think in terms of the ratios. Right? What price am I paying for these earnings? Over the last four quarters, according to the AI I have looked at for free, the average PE for Apple has been 29 on average, over the last four quarters, over the last year, right, 29. Right now, in mid-September, as of a few days ago, as of September the 6th, Apple's PE is already around 33. Folks, it's elevated at a time when many consumers are stretched. And understand, a cell phone now is a necessity in modern life. 
right? You watch these crime shows and you know there's going to be a part of the crime show where they're going to talk about, you know, these phones pinging off a tower, right? Because everyone understands that adults have these phones, right? It's suspicious. You already know the suspect is guilty. When they tell you Paul, who always had his phone on, turned off his phone the night of the murders, right? You already know, wow, the guy turned off his phone. He must have done it, right? We've jumped the shark, folks. Now you have to explain why your phone was turned off, right? In the old days, and I'm talking about just a few decades ago, many people didn't have phones. Now we not only expect you to have a phone, we expect you to have that phone on at all times. Right now, understand, with the consumer stretched and in need of a phone, with the ability to get artificial intelligence for free from some very well-funded sources, right, Microsoft's Bing browser, Google, their Chrome browser, their Google Gemini, right, Microsoft's Copilot, right, from well-funded sources with a lot of brand equity, you're able to get AI for free. So, given that Apple's price is already a little bit expensive, right, it's above 33 when for the last four quarters it was at 29 in terms of P.E., I myself am curious to hear what Apple has to say. I'm hoping it's not. That we have new phones. They're going to cost you eight, nine, one thousand dollars Right? Eight, nine hundred, one thousand, more than that, dollars. Uh, we have some new features thrown in and you're thinking to yourself, wow, you know, the megapixels on my photos are already better than the human eye right is the tweak that apple is offering an advantage that the market won't be able to catch up with for several years or am i paying hundreds of dollars for an advantage that the market will catch up with in a few months right understand too how fast the world moves there was a time when you saw a big screen TV. We'll define that as 65 inches or more. Back then, they wanted to convince you that certain manufacturers had an edge in making these TVs. And it was a luxury item. You'd go over a friend's house and you would see this TV and it would be 65 inches, 80 inches. And you would think, oh man, you know, Joe is rolling. In fact, let's give Paul credit here. Paul is rolling. Right? Paul's living the good life. Folks, now you can get these TVs for just a few hundred dollars on Amazon. Right? Luxury items become widely accepted, widely distributed, widely available, widely used products. Right? As you hear Apple today, you need to ask yourself how big is Apple's moat really? If you're a longtime Apple user and you don't want to leave the ecosystem, great, we understand it. I'm just here to tell you that the teenagers of the world right now are coming from a different place. Right? They don't associate or tie a particular technology with any particular supplier. Right? So they'll even look at EVs. And while my generation thought Tesla they're thinking of several different EV makers, right? Just understand too, when I speak with young people, they intuitively know that EV doesn't necessarily mean autonomous driving, right? So Apple, shortly after NVIDIA announced a blowout quarter and had their stock drop over the next few days by several percentage points, right? The question here is whether the news from Apple is going to be so mind-blowing, 
that at a time when AI is already out for the general public to use for free, skeptics like me will then say, you know what, I've got to spend $1,000 to be part of the, of the Apple ecosystem. This is a development that they can't match in Android, at least not for the short term. Right, folks? Let's just say that's a big ask. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. I will just say, it's in economically uncertain times like this that you're able to grab a barrel of oil for under $70. Right? That you're able to grab gold miners for cheap at a time when gold somehow is close to all-time highs, right? And if you believe that they're going to print more fiat currency, that, in fact, Fed Chairman Powell is going to announce a 25 basis point or 50 basis point, right? Rate cut, um, you're thinking to yourself, wow, what could possibly be better positioned than gold miners, which historically will jump many times what gold jumps, right? Or Bitcoin, which has been struggling to get back to 60,000 a coin. And you're thinking to yourself, my goodness, right? I was hoping to get a sale on Bitcoin. Here it is. And it's coming during a halving year, right around the time period when Bitcoin should be racing, right? You might want to hoard your cash like Warren Buffett is doing right now, to take advantage of these mispricings. Let me close by saying this. We live on a planet, right? We live in a country, but the country is one of many on a planet, right? One of the biggest economic producers in the world is China, right, folks? China right now is facing deflation. Please, I urge you to use your AI assistant of choice and look up, search for China deflation, right? You have high-ranking officials in China, people with influence, talking about China's deflation problem. You want to know how bad it is? Folks, the 30-year in China right now if my information is correct, is below 4%. Right, folks, that's ridiculous. Right, I know a lot of viewers are saying, well, what about the U.S.'s 30-year? <laughs> Fair point. Right, just understand, though, that deflation tends to export itself. In other words, if China is making goods and services cheaply, you're going to have a willing market that's going to want to buy those goods and services, right? Understand how sophisticated supply lines are in the world. Donald Trump can come in and he can say, oh, I'm going to put a tariff on everything. Let's hope Congress shuts him down on that, by the way, because he's really putting a tariff on you when he puts a tariff on goods imported from countries like China, right? But just understand, the connected are connected. They can find a way to get Chinese goods through other countries, right? Just understand, these are challenging economic times. It's unclear how all of this is going to turn out, right? It is. And so in times like this, hoarding cash might not be the worst idea, especially since some companies you know, like Big Lots, are having to file bankruptcy. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Nothing I said in this video um, should be viewed as any disparagement whatsoever of the quality of Apple's products. Right? I'm just wondering how big their moat is. If today's presentation is going to focus on, hey, these are the capabilities of AI. 
Well, let me just say, player, I already have many of those capabilities on my Android phone. Those are my thoughts at a cheaper price. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. Thanks for stopping by.